Dawkins is so popular because people are so unsophisticated in their thinking. I am just appalled, honestly, when I read the stuff that's out there on the internet, how inept and sophomoric people are. I, I'm afraid that many young people just have never been exposed to good, rigorous argumentation with regard to these matters, and therefore they're taken in by these Dawkins types because they've never really read sophisticated treatments of these problems. And to a certain extent, I think the church bears a responsibility for this because we've so dumbed down our preaching and our Sunday school classes and our devotional thoughts that we're not equipping Christians to be sophisticated in their grasp of Christian doctrine and theology, much less in what good reasons there are to believe it. But in general, our, our educational system, I'm afraid, has been terribly dumbed down so that people cannot think logically, they're uninformed, and they're unfamiliar with the sophisticated literature that is out there on these topics. And so they're taken in by this sort of sophomoric material that people like Dawkins and Harris and Hitchens put out. It must be extremely frustrating for someone in your position. Well, you know, it's not so much frustrating as it is just terribly disappointing. I honestly, I've started a website this last year called reasonablefaith.org where I furnish all kinds of material on the defense of Christianity free of charge for folks on the internet. And I, I must tell you, I am just flabbergasted at some of the silly, ignorant responses to this material. I try to anticipate what would be good objections to my arguments, how one might respond and then answer them in advance. But what I've found is I cannot anticipate the irrational, absurd, ludicrous responses to my arguments that many people think are just devastating knockdown responses so that it's become just impossible to anticipate some of the responses to these arguments. Let me just give you one example. A key premise in the cosmological argument is whatever begins to exist has a cause. One of the responses that's out there on YouTube and other places on the internet that some people just find devastating, this is so convincing, they say nothing ever begins to exist um, because everything has material out of which it's constituted and those atoms and particles existed before the thing did and so nothing ever begins to exist. The first premise is false. And I think, what is the matter with these people? Have I always existed? Didn't I begin to exist at the moment, say, when my father's sperm and mother's egg came into union? Did I exist before the union of the sperm and the egg? If so, where was I? Uh, who was I? Was I around during the Jurassic Age when the dinosaurs were about? Have I always existed? That, that is so absurd to think that I never began to exist, even though the material stuff out of which I've made existed before me. So I don't know what's the matter with these people. Do they think that the Earth didn't begin to exist, that our galaxy didn't begin to exist, that, that, that once upon a time in the history of the universe, that there were people and dinosaurs about, uh, say, uh, 10 billion years ago? That would be absurd. There were no galaxies at that time. So how can they say that the dinosaurs and people have always existed? It's it just irrational. And yet people think that that refutes the premise that whatever begins to exist has a cause, when it doesn't do so at all. So I, I'm just utterly bewildered at how, how people are taken in by this sort of lack of rigorous thinking and I'm just doing my best to try to counter it in whatever way I can. <laughs>